This is geometry, unit nine, working on circles. A circle is a set of all points in a plane equal distance from a given point. So we have this center point and all the points that are equal distance from it. That's kind of looking like a circle. All the points equal distance from a center would make a circle. A radius. A radius of a circle is a segment that goes from the center to the edge of the circle. So we could name that if we had points on it as the endpoints of a segment. That would be radius AB and we would put a line above it to represent a segment. A chord. A chord is similar to a radius but a chord will connect any two points on a circle. The endpoints have to be on the outside of that circle. And that is considered a chord. Where a diameter is a special type of chord. A diameter is going to be a chord that contains the center of the circle. Again, a chord we could use two letters with our segment above it. Use the endpoints of your segment to name that chord. The endpoints of the segment, even if it has another point labeled in it, the diameter is EF. It's the endpoints of the segment is how you name a segment. Is how we're going to name our diameter, our chord, even our radius. So we'll come down to our diagram. We're looking for a radius. There are several radii in this circle. This is called circle L because L is the center point. A diameter, I believe there's one diameter, there's two different chords, and there's one way we can name this circle. So a radius, remember, a radius has to go from the center to the edge of the circle. So LW is considered a radius. LT would be considered a radius, or LR could be considered a radius. Those would be radii. A diameter. A diameter has to be a chord that contains the center, otherwise known as two radii that go exactly across from each other. So we only have one of those here. The diameter is RT. A chord. The diameter is a chord, that is true, but to fall under the category of just being a chord, we would typically call that RS and ST. And then to name the circle, we would use a circle shape with a dot in the middle to represent our circle 
and then we use that middle letter L. So that's called circle L. Kind of like how we name a triangle with the symbol of a triangle. We name a circle with the symbol of a circle. On the flip side, we're going to come to circumference. And recall that the circumference is the distance around the outside of the circle. So the circumference, which is abbreviated just be a C of a circle, is diameter times pi. Now pi, you pretty much are familiar with pi being the number 3.14. But what is 3.14? 3.14 is the number of diameters that fit around a circle. So you're going to get three diameters and a little bit extra to fit around the edge of a circle. For any size circle you've got, it's always 3.14. That's where pi comes from, the number of diameters that fit around a circle. So. If we know the diameter is going to fit around the circle 3.14 times, we can take the number of the diameter and times it by that 3.14. And that will give us that total distance around the outside. We know that the diameter goes all the way through the shape. Well, we have another calculation that's inside the shape, and that would be a radius. So the radius is 2, actually the radius is r, right? The diameter is 2r. So it's the same calculation. The diameter is 2 times the radius. And we typically put the pi in the middle. So we call the circumference, a second formula you could use would be 2 pi r where 2r is the same thing as the diameter, and we all know that pi is the number 3.14. So we have diameter times pi, and we have 2 pi r. So when we do these calculations, we talk about exact values, and we talk about rounded values. Exact values are going to have the pi symbol in it. Rounded values are going to be using a calculator and rounding to a specific number. Typically, looking at the third number after the decimal, so we round it to the second number, the hundredth spot. Find the circumference. Circumference equals the radius times pi, or... Sorry, that would be fine, but the way that we wrote our formula originally was 2 times pi r. 2 pi r. So we have 2 pi <coughs> times 8, which would be 16 pi. And those would be feet. 16 pi feet. That would be the exact answer. We're not rounding anything. That is the exact value of the distance around the circle. We can take our calculator and do 16 pi, or 16 times pi even, if we wanted to figure out the decimal version of this. So that's going to be 50.27, because the third number is 5 or bigger. So we say 0.27. So this is approximately 50.27 feet. That would be a rounded answer. For the next one, notice that here they draw the line all the way across. In the middle, they put down to 13 inches. So that's implying that the whole distance across the diameter, diameter equals 13 inches. So our circumference, we might as well use the diameter. 
formula rather than the radius. You could use radius, but since we are given the diameter, let's use diameter. Circumference is going to be 13 times pi. And that's going to be in inches. And that's the exact answer. You're done. If you want a rounded answer, which approximately is going to be 13 times pi, and we get 40.84, and then we have a zero. That zero is not five or bigger. So we just leave it at 0.84. 40.84 inches. That's the distance around the outside of the circle. Now notice that this one's a little bit different. This one is asking for what is the radius. So if you have a situation where you have this much fencing, let's say, or you have this much string, I have... 65.98 centimeters of string. How big would my radius be? You could either lay out your string into a circle and measure it, or you can do some calculations before you actually do that measuring. You can calculate what the radius would be. So since we're going to work with R, we're going to say that the circumference equals 2 pi r. We know the circumference is 65.98, and that is supposed to equal 2 pi times r. I don't know what the r is, of course. That's what I'm solving for. So I'm going to divide by 2 pi. I want to get the r by itself, so I'm going to divide by the pi and the 2. So that crosses out here. That leaves me with just the radius. So I come to my calculator. Now you got to be careful here. This is 65.98. And we're going to divide that. You must use parentheses to guarantee you get the correct answer. Because you want to divide by both the pi and the 2. And we get 10.50. And those would be centimeters. The radius would be 10.50 for a circle that had a circumference of 65.98. Now notice, if you don't use parentheses, 65.98 divided, wrong symbol, 65.98 divided by 2 pi. Now what's going to happen here is it's going to take the 65.98, it's going to divide it by 2, then it's going to times it by pi. You get the really big number. So without parentheses, you are getting a different answer. That's with that calculator. If you use this calculator, and say 65.98, divided by 2 pi. Okay, this is being a smart calculator. It knows that the pi is connected to the 2 and that you are dividing by both terms and you get exactly 10.5. So you just need to know what language your calculator is talking. It never hurts to use parentheses around the denominator. It could make a big difference.
All right, two crazy story problems. This first story problem. If the tires on my car have 17 inch diameter, Seventeen inch diameter, and it's going to roll along. <clears throat> it's going to roll a thousand times. How far has it traveled? And how many miles is that going to be? So notice that the seventeen is in inches. So we're going to figure out the circumference of one wheel. We're going to times it by a thousand revolutions, a thousand rolls. Then we're going to need to convert that to feet. Then we're going to convert that to miles. So we have 17 inches. So that's the diameter. So the circumference equals diameter times pi. So the circumference equals 17 pi. That is the distance around the outside of the circle. That is in inches. If we wanted to put that into a decimal, we could. 17 times pi. That gives us 5341. That is approximately 53.41 inches. Now we're going to take that 53.41 and do the circumference a thousand times. Now what I would suggest, don't use the rounded number, but use the calculated number so it's more exact. So we multiply that by a thousand and we get this 53,407. point zero eight inches. That's a whole bunch of inches. I don't know just how long that is really. I don't have a good approximation of how many inches that is. So we're going to take all of those inches and we're going to group them up. We're going to put them in little baggies. We're going to group them up in groups of 12. And that's going to give us, if we take this number, 53,000, <coughs> 407, and we divide that by 12, we're going to get 4,450 feet. And I don't know just how far that is. So we're going to take 4,450 feet and we're going to divide that by 5,280 because one mile is 5,280 feet. So if we divide this by 5,280, we get 0.84 miles. So your car rolling a thousand times is going to go just under a mile. So next, even a little harder to visualize, is a satellite. Right? We send these satellites up into space. And so much relies on these satellites that we have up in space. So we have the Earth. The Earth is... A sphere we'll represent it as a circle and we'll draw 
a very poor representation of the United <coughs> States. A little Michigan there, right? And then there's a little Mexico that comes down here. Um, I think it does a little bit of something like this, right? And then we have a little Canada that goes up there. And anyway, that's our world. The world we live in. Up in the sky, 200 miles. 200 miles. Up into the sky, from the earth, is the satellite. That's what that little star is. The earth itself, the radius of the earth, is 4,000 miles. 4,000 miles is the radius of the earth. So the total radius of this circle, the path that the satellite goes around the earth, if it always stays 200 miles away, that's going to be 4,000 miles plus 200, that's going to be 4,200 miles is the radius. The Earth is approximately 4,000, and then the satellite is an additional 2,000 above the Earth. If it takes two hours for the satellite to spin around the Earth, how fast is it going? Could I ride my bike around as fast as it goes? Could I drive a Lamborghini around that fast? So distance equals rate times time. Our distance is 4,200. Our rate is what we don't know and it's supposed to take two hours. So we divide by two. Oh, I'm sorry. That's just the radius, right? So if that's the radius, we have to figure out the distance around it, which would have to be the circumference. The circumference equals diameter, which is radius times two times pi. So that's 84 pi. 8400 pi. Now we're going to take that number and that equals rate times time. And we divide that by 2 and we get 4200 pi. So by taking our 4200 pi and dividing it by 2, not dividing it by two, but it's 13,194. 13,194, 69 miles per hour.